it is time to say goodbye to the 507K. Is this even in focus? It's time to say goodbye to the 507K. It's been nice, it's been a good time. It's just a filthy little thing. <laughs> it's time to say hello to the EPS carry. Uh, if you've never opened a Holosun dot before, good lord, why is this so difficult? Ugh. There's a manual. Woo! We should actually probably just double check. I believe it's 15 inch pounds. Yep, 15 inch pounds. All right, cool, we're good. This is pretty much what they all look like. You get a dot. Woo! This is the EPS carry, 2MOA dot. It is all blacked out except for the direction for your elevation and windage. Good lads. Well, and I guess your cereal. But no, no crazy white logos or anything like that. Woo. All right, then you got a plate that uh, should pretty much fit anything that you might want to put this on. Then just like with every hollow sun, you get a tool. It's a T10 Torx. And then a little tiny flathead that fits on all of the different hollow sun turrets. Uh, and then you get three different length screws. They're all different configurations of lengths and standoff before the thread and whatnot. We're not actually opening any of those. We'll just use the same ones that are on there. But all right, cool. Let's set that aside. That'll go in a bag somewhere. They're nice to have on hand at the range or something. We're going to be using the fix it sticks. This is the up to 65 inch pound with T10 on it. We are cleared. And this is very, very straightforward. We break any Loctite that we had on there. It's pretty stiff in there. That's what she said. Oh, you can't even see how gross it is on camera. It's bad. And we'll just throw a little dab on here. I'm putting it on a P365X macro. So I do not need the adapter plate. It will sit just right on, which is perfect. I don't like dealing with all that crap. Let's see, is this magnetic? Nope, but we can fix that. One of these guys, oh. And that is all we need. Drop a nice glob on there. Uh, we won't take it all the way in yet. We'll kind of just get it close. And we'll grab the other one. We'll get a little glob on there too. I do put it towards the end. So that way while it's screwing on, it kind of moves up into it. I don't know if that actually does anything, but it makes sense. Kind of spreading it along the threads. Now we'll switch over. Might need to get a little extension. Yeah, I should get an extension. This looks insane. But you know what? If it works. All right, all right 15. All right, 15, we'll confirm on both. Cool, all right, now I will do myself a favor and just flip that upside down and let it dry for a bit. We aren't staking it, we're doing like a little marker stake. And then we will get an initial zero on the dot, so we will at least hit on target and be good to go. I really don't like using Massive high contrast, so you know, white on black. So we're gonna go gold, so I can still see these dots. Pick that up, and staking is, well, it's not even really staking, but you know, marking these to see whether or not, let's do it like that. That will tell me if these things move. That's all that does if you've seen people do it and not sure why. So that when I actually go to shoot it, if those move, there's a problem. All right, so now we're gonna get an initial zero on this dot so that we can guarantee when we go actually zero it, we're gonna hit paper and we won't waste a ton of ammo trying to get on target. So some people swear that you can just take a dot right out of the box, put it on, and then you magically are just perfectly right all the time. I've never had that be true. Pretty much what we're gonna do is stabilize 
our firearm somehow. So I just have mine sitting on that stand it was on earlier. And we're gonna line up those irons just like normal. So to know where you wanna place your dot, you need to know what type of hold your irons are on. These are SIG irons straight out of the box, which are always combat hold and zeroed for 25 yards. I'll put a picture up somewhere or other showing what the three different holds are um, so that I don't have to try and fail at describing it. But essentially, combat hold is you line them up like normal but then you overlay the dot on your front sight onto your target you do not cut it so we're going to position our red dot right on the center of that front post we are going to go opposite of what your turrets say though because those are based on impact so if you need your shot to go up you turn it the direction of up However, we are doing it at the muzzle end, so you do opposite. For example, right is turning this way towards you. So if we turn this right on here, well, look at that, it goes left. But if we turn it to what they say is left, it goes right. All those adjustments are for point of impact. If you're just trying to move the dot, then it's opposite of what it is marked. Maybe we'll we'll come down a hair. I'll do this again off camera. This is more just so I can kind of demonstrate to you what it looks like. The dot is not actually that small. It's just the camera itself. We'll actually go back to the right and click. Maybe. Again, this is all just guesstimation based on how it looks going through my viewfinder. That won't be exactly right but it will be close to a 25 yard zero. What it really guarantees though, is that you will get on paper and that you will know where all your shots go as long as you know how to shoot a pistol. If you wanna actually know a good zero to choose, you will find any and all opinion on the internet. I prefer a 10 yard zero. Maybe I'll make another video talking about that at some point, but for pistols, I go for 10 yard zeros. Hopefully that helped you get your red dot installed and zero.